The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. So without further ado, I'd like to ask our first presenter, uh, Mr. Chi Zhang, to come and present his work. Uh, Mr. Chi Zhang, uh, he is working as a bridge engineer in WSB in Vancouver office, and he, uh, he did his master's on performance-based design at UBC Okanagan, and currently he's also pursuing PhD on uh, precast uh, cell-centering uh, concrete columns. Uh, his research is being currently sponsored by Canadian Precast Concrete Institute. So without further ado, Chi Zhang. Thank you, Dr. Alan. Uh, my name is Chi Zhang, and uh, this research was performed by master student Rashidu and myself under the supervision of Dr. Shahri Alan. And uh, the title of the presentation is uh, Seismic Performance Assessment of Concrete Bridge Piers Designed Following Canadian Highway Bridge Design Code. Uh, in this presentation, I will talk about the current Canadian Highway Bridge Design Code and the British Columbia Supplement to the National Code. The, the National Code was published in 2014. It allows both performance and force-based design for standard highway bridges. But for lifeline bridges, uh, lifeline bridges in Canada is uh, similar to the critical bridges in Astro. So for, for critical bridges, performance-based design has to be adopted. I will present uh, the force-based design, performance-based design following the Canadian code and uh, talk about the effect using high-strength steels and concrete. I will also present uh, a comparison of the seismic performance and uh, our conclusions. Uh, so in this presentation, I will focus major road bridges, which is uh, standard highway bridges in Canada. So uh, in, in the current Canadian design code, the minimum damage is defined as a concrete string shall not exceed 0.004, and reinforcing steel shall not exceed yielding. So this criteria has to be adopted for lifeline bridges at a 975 year earthquake event. For standard highway bridges, this criteria apply to 475 year earthquake event. So uh, as you can see, that could be a li little bit challenging in high seismic zones if we don't allow steel yielding. And also in, in those criteria, there are also requirements for bearings and joints, but the focus of this presentation will be on the columns. And the repairable damage in the current code is defined as uh, reinforcing steel shall not exceed 0.015. For critical bridges, this is a design criteria at uh, 2475 years quick event. For standard highway bridges, this is a criteria for 975 years quick event. And at th this level, the bearings and the joints can be damaged and uh, be replaced. The extensive damage is defined as concrete core shall not crash and reinforcing steel shall not exceed 0.05. So for standard highway bridges, this criteria applied to 2475 years quick event. This is a flow chart of the basic performance-based design process. So uh, even when we do the performance-based design, we still cannot get away from the force-based design. The preliminary design result is normally still based on the simplified force-based design method. We have to come up with uh, some detailed design and then run a nonlinear pushover and time history analysis to check if the performance criteria are met or not. In, in this case, based on Canadian code, the performance criteria of the column is based on the maximum concrete and steel string. So if all the criteria are met, then the design is done. Otherwise, we'll have to do a few iterations to change the design parameter. And this is one of the case study we did and th this is a bridge in Vancouver. It's a concrete bridge with uh, four spans 
and it's uh, supported by multi column and uh, extended piles. So the, the total span length of the bridge is 100 meters. The deck width is uh, 40 meters. We did the modeling in both the uh, seismic struct and the CSF bridge. When we performed the design, we have considered the uh, PY curves. And uh, for response spectral analysis, we iteratively determine the soil spring at the different design levels. So here, here I'm presenting three design cases. The one is a force based design based on the older version of the Canadian code. It was published in 2006. That was only designed for a return period of 475 year earthquake. So the longitudinal rebar ratio is 1.9 percent. For design case two, D2, it is also a force based design, and but it's based on the current Canadian code. It, th that code was published in 2014, and the return period for that design was a 2475 year earthquake event. And the rebar ratio increased to 2.7 percent. And finally, D3 is a performance based design case in the current national code. And we got a longitudinal rebar ratio of 5.3%, which is uh, not uh, practical at all. But this was governed by the design criteria at uh, minimum damage at uh, 475 years quick event, because the code doesn't allow rebar yielding. So that was a very challenging criteria. And uh, we, we did a pushover and time history analysis for all different designs. And this is a design case one. This is a design based on the older version of the Canadian code, just using force-based design. The first blue dot on those two curves represent the first yielding in the columns. And the first vertical line represents the displacement demand at a 475 year earthquake event. As you can see from, from the two fingers, the first yielding happens way before we reach the displacement demand at a 475 year earthquake event which means that uh, the older designs doesn't meet the design criteria at uh, the minimum damage level. But uh, when, when I look at uh, the displacement demand at the 2475 year earthquake, that, that is the last vertical line in those two fingers. And, uh, but the, the damage at uh, 2475 year earthquake event is uh, still within the limit of extensive damage. So we are very confident that uh, life safety is uh, protected even when we just use the traditional force based design using older design code. And here the table presents the performance that uh, a force based design method can achieve. So at uh, 475 years quick event, we are able to limit the steel string to 0 0.005, but in the new design code, the, the criteria is a 0 0.02. So that uh, no yielding is very difficult to achieve. And the concrete compressive string at uh, 475 years is uh, within 0 0.03. And if we look at 2475 year earthquake, the steel string is uh, within 0 0.014. So if, even if we just use the traditional design method, the bridge is uh, pretty robust. And uh, uh, although the damage is a little bit more than the performance based design, but we are confident that the, the bridge is uh, adequate in protecting life safety. And uh, after the publication of uh, Canadian Highway Bridge Design Code in 2014, in 2016, the British Columbia Ministry of Transportation published a supplement to the National Design Code because the criteria in the National Code is really stringent. And in, in the Western Canada area, where we have high seismic zones, it's very difficult to design the ductile columns and the design the capacity protective elements using, using that criteria. So the BC supplement increased the limit for steel at minimum damage from no yielding to within 0 0.01. For concrete string, it was increased to 0 0.006 from 0 0.04. And I, as you can see from the table, the limit state for repairable and extensive damage was also relaxed so that we can do better capacity protective element design. 
and but to minimize the damage, we also investigated using high strength steels and concrete. So the previous example was based on the normal strength rebar and concrete, say 400 MPa rebar and 35 MPa concrete. So here we are investigating using high strength steel up to 800 MPa. It, it is understood that uh, for high strength steel they have uh, less ductility and I think in a lot of DOTs and uh, in different design guidelines, it's not uh, suggested to use uh, high strength steel. But because we are trying to limit the damage at different earthquake levels, we may not need that much of ductility for the design. And then we did the modeling in seismal extract and uh, we validated the model based on two tests. The first one is a 400 by 400 millimeter column, square column, and second one is a 914 diameter column. And uh, here are the validation results. So the, the first uh, figure is normal steel reinforced column. The second one is a high strand steel reinforced column. That was uh, more than 600 MPa for the minimum yielding strength. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we are able to capture the base shear and uh, the drift and also the change of stiffness in seismic strike program. And then, based on that, we generated four different designs. So the first one, P40 slash 400, that is a, a column with a 40 MPa concrete and a 400 MPa steel. The second one has a 40 MPa concrete and 690 MPa steel. The third one is a high strength concrete with a high strength steel. And uh, those three cases are based on the Canadian Highway Bridge design code. And the last one has a normal, normal strength reinforced concrete column. It was designed based on BC supplement. And then, based on that, we got uh, four design results. So th the first one is a uh, normal strength reinforced concrete and then we get a longitudinal reinforcement ratio of 3.8%. If in any sections we need to lap the rebar, then that ratio would double. So it's not really a practical design. So, but when we use a high strength steel in the second case, we are able to reduce the longitudinal rebar to 1.6%. That's uh, even less than 50% of the rebar we need for, for for the case with 400 MPa rebar. And for the third case, uh, when we use the high strand steel and the concrete as well, we are able to reduce the column section from 914 to only 750. But, but again, the rebar ratio was increased because of the, the reduction in the size. And for the last one, based on BC supplement, in this case, we only need uh, less than 1% rebar, but because I, I don't think Astro or the Canadian code allows any ratio less than 1% in column. So in a practical design, that one would be 1%. That, so that's a minimum still required by different codes. And the conclusions we get is uh, the bridge is designed as per the older version Canadian Highway Bridge Design Code and uh, the current version of Canadian Highway Bridge Design Code can both protect life safety, and they are robust. Although the force based design may introduce more damage, but uh, we are confident that the collapse will not happen. And the performance based design in the current Canadian Highway Bridge design code is very conservative in high seismic zones in comparison with uh, force based design in the older version of the code and the current version of the code. Uh, because of that, it, it might be challenging in terms, of, in terms of construction and do the capacity protective element design because we really need to have a much bigger foundation and pier caps to make sure they are capacity protected. And uh, because uh, in, in the current design code in, in both the BC supplement and the 
Canadian Highway Bridge design code, the, the minimum damage limit is very stringent. So that, that is at a 475 year earthquake event. So in, in high seismic zones, it's very likely that uh, the design will be governed by the minimum damage at a 475 year earthquake event. And lastly, the inclusion of high strength steel can reduce longitudinal reinforcement significantly. And high strength steel is a better in limiting damage. But I think the challenge is that if we use a high strength steel in the column, then we need to make sure the foundation and the pier cap is also stronger than column. We might also need to use high strength steel in other elements as well. And that's some of the reference. And uh, I would like to thank the support from Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council and the support from MMM Group.